And it is time. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to my live stream. My name is Tyler, and yo, super excited to have you hanging out with me. I do want to let you know that right now I am live streaming to three different platforms. You're welcome to join on whichever platform works best for you, but I am live on Twitch and LinkedIn and YouTube. For LinkedIn and YouTube, if you just search for my name, which is in the title. Uh, no, it's not in the title this time, but my name is Tyler Ramsby. You search for my name, you'll find it. Otherwise, if you want to watch me on Twitch, if you just go to hacksmarter.live, it should bring you to the Hack Smarter Twitch page. But you're welcome to join on whatever platform works best for you. I'm going to keep my eye on all of the chat in each spot, and we'll do my best to respond to questions and all that good stuff. Now, <clears throat> sort of like yesterday, y'all, I still have this weird like sinus infection, head cold, stuffiness. So I'm going to try not to cough into my microphone and uh, hopefully I don't sound too sick, but I'm doing my best to fake it till I make it, but excited for the stream. 
Um, Want to make sure everything looks good in each of the platforms. So far, everything seems to be doing good. Want to say a special hello to those of you who at least uh, said hi in chat. We got Haircut Fish and Reckless Gizmo and uh, Screwface and Mark Gillanders and Kevin Usuan. I'm sure I messed up both of your names. Let me check out LinkedIn because I always have to refresh the chat. We have Ayush. He just uh, liked it. So if you're here, hello, my friend. Good to have you here. Here's a plan for tonight, y'all. We are, and I'm, I'm not going to, re- <laughs> it's confusing. I'm not going to release this yet, but I am going to live stream it if that makes sense. But if you saw, I released my very first public try hack room called Hack Smarter Security. Now, technically, there's not supposed to be hints for the first 72 hours, but uh, I'm the room creator, so I'm YOLO, do what I want. I'm, I'm going to kind of guide you guys through the room and share some of my methodology and thinking behind it. But what I'm not going to do, like we're going to record this, but I'm not going to release it as a standalone YouTube video for a few days. And was actually almost not going to do this because it took quite a while for people to fully root the room. But it has been fully rooted by a handful of people. And so I feel safe walking you and guiding you through the process. But I'm not going to share flags. I'm just going to share you the process, but encourage you to follow along and uh, the room's free. So you don't need to try hack me subscription or anything. If you, well, actually I'm going to start recording before I do all this. Well, no, I'll show you guys real quick. So I'm not going to show this in the recording, but if you go to try hack me's page and just scroll down to new room releases, there it is. Hack smarter security. So I would encourage you if you want to follow along with me, this is going to be more, although I made the room and I know how to compromise it. I'm going to do my best to go slow and approach it as someone approaching the room for the first time and share with you some good methodology, some good learning uh, that will hopefully help you in your overall journey. This is a medium rated room and it's windows. So I know it's a little more unfamiliar for people. So I do want to take it slow and answer any questions you might have as we go. Sound like a plan? Sound like a plan. All right. Let me, uh, I'm going to start recording, do an introduction for the YouTube video that we'll be releasing later on, but then we will dive into this room together. Hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to another video. This is the video. This will be the official walkthrough for the Hack Smarter Security Room on Try Hack Me. Now, if you were not aware, the Hack Smarter Security Room was created by yours truly. It's my first public release on Try Hack Me. It is a medium rated Windows room, and it requires some really good thinking for initial access and then AV evasion. You have to evade Windows Defender for the privacy. So a little more difficult than your typical boot to root room. But in this walkthrough, I'm not just going to take like 10 minutes and show you how to solve it. I want us to go slow. So I'm going to approach it. Although I made the machine, I'm going to approach it as someone scanning it, enumerating it for the first time, share with you my thought process, share with you my methodology. And I hope this will be more of an interactive journey together. So if you haven't already, we'd encourage you to go to try hack me, search the hacks murder security room. If you're watching this now, you should see it in recent releases and you can do this right alongside me and we'll kind of walk through this together. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and share my screen. Here is Hacks Murder Security. Can you hack the hackers? So let's go through the challenge description together. Your mission is to exfiltrate the web server of the notorious Hacks Murder APT or Advanced Persistent Threat Group. This group is known for conducting malicious cyber activities and it's imperative that we gather intel on their upcoming targets. The Hacksmutter APT operates a well-protected web server fortified with advanced security measures. Your objective is to compromise their server undetected, extract the list of upcoming targets, and leave no trace of your presence. To begin, you will need to employ your extensive hacking skills and exploit any vulnerabilities in their server's defenses. Remember, stealth and discretion are key. You must avoid triggering any alarms that could lead to a premature shutdown of the server or alert the Hacksmutter APT group to your presence. Once you gain and access to their server, navigate through the intricate network infrastructure, bypassing firewalls, encryption protocols, and other security layers. Locate the central repository where they store sensitive information, including their upcoming target list. Intel has reported this is located on the desktop of the administrator user, but exercise caution as you retrieve the list. The Hacksmutter APT group is known for employing countermeasures such as intrusion detection systems and advanced monitoring tools, <coughs> Windows Defender. It's crucial that you maintain a low profile and avoid leaving any traces that could compromise the mission or endanger your own safety. Upon successfully acquiring the list of upcoming targets, transmit the data to our secure server using encrypted channels. This will ensure that our analysts can analyze the information and take appropriate action to protect 
protect potential targets from cyber attacks. Remember, this is a high stakes mission and the information you gather will be instrumental in dismantling the Hacksmart APT group's operations. Good luck and may your skills lead you to success in this mission. Let's go. All right, let's go ahead and grab this IP. The first thing we're going to do is add it to our Etsy host file. Now, if you're new to CTFs, the Etsy host file in Linux resolves IP to host. So rather than us remembering the IP, we'll be able to call it like hacksmarter.thm. So to do that, we'll do sudo and then nano. Nano is sort of like notepad, but for Linux. And we'll do Etsy host. Type in our password. And we'll type in our IP there and we'll call it hacksmarter.thm. Save it and we'll just see if we can ping it, which we can. Now, the first step is doing our initial enumeration. There's various ways to approach this. In the past, I'd always just use Nmap, but I'm really enjoying Rust Scan both for the speed and the way that you can pass the open ports to Nmap. So it sort of does what I was already doing before manually. The way we're going to do that, if you don't have Rust Scan super easy to install, you can check it out. But we'll do Rust Scan like that, dash A to pass it our target. And we'll do hacksmarter. Oh, if I can type hacksmarter.thm. And then what we want to do is say, hey, any open ports that you find, we want you to enumerate those with nmap we'll do that with dash dash and then dash a this dash a is a, the nmap um switch we want it to run on the open ports and we will go ahead and hit enter and it should begin discovering those ports orange you said nanos for people that hate v uh nano is for people who are noobs like me and can't escape uh that but yeah either either one works honestly i use mousepad a lot too mousepad's even more user friendly than nano so here we go. Initially, we can see a few things. We have port 21 open. That's probably FTP or fire file transfer protocol. We have port 22 open, which is SSH, which is a little bit out of the ordinary for a Windows machine. We have port 80 open, which is going to be a, a web server, likely. We have port 1311 open. We're not sure what that is off the top. 3389 is your standard port for RDP or remote desktop protocol. And so uh, we'll let this do its thing. And in the meantime, we can even begin poking at some of these ports and let's also get our notes pulled up. So I'm gonna open up Cherry Tree here. I'm just gonna start a new one and we'll call it Hack Smarter. And with that, Usually I wait till this is done and we'll pull our um, notes into there. But let's just begin poking around at a few things. So we can begin with FTP. And anytime you see FTP open, really the thing you check is, hey, do we have anonymous access to the FTP server? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open a new tab. And I'm also going to name it terminal. And we'll go to CD home Tyler try hack me. We'll make a directory for a hack smarter CD to hack smarter. And now we'll do FTP anonymous at hacksmarter.thm you can do anything for the password and so we do have anonymous access to the ftp server with that we can just see if there's any interesting files being hosted to here we can go ahead and do ls and we see a few interesting things we have credit cards we pwned and a stolen passport let's go ahead and check out credit cards we pwned first we can do that with get credit cards whoops Get credit cards we pwn.txt. And so we were able to successfully download that. Let's go ahead and get stolen passport. And that gets interrupted. The specified network name is no longer available. So that didn't work. What if we change it over to active? Uh, passive. Passive mode off. Let's try it again. Don't know if this will work, even though I created the room. Nope, so that's not going to work. We'll just exit there, and we have, oh, maybe it did work. We have credit cards we pwn. Let's check that out. And look at that. Free Try Hack Me subs for everyone. Just grab your preferred credit card number right there, expiration date, security code, and you can go ahead and get those. Uh, no, those aren't real. So what I did do is I went to one of those like fake credit card generators and just generated a bunch of uh, credit card numbers. These might actually work on some of those free trials where you need a credit card number because it follows the valid schema, but you will not be able to purchase anything. But that's our credit card numbers there. We can go ahead and check out this password if we were able to open it whoops we'll uh open folder and we'll go over to try hack me hack smarter can we open it 
No, it's it's corrupted. If you are able to get it to open, like some people have, there's some tricks if you do the FTP. It is a passport with my eye really big as the pitcher. It d has nothing to do with the machine. So don't try to do steganography steganography or anything like that i don't like that stuff it's super ctfe it's literally just there for fun so these two things don't have anything to do with the machine but when you do have access to ftp let me go back to ftp well first of all um echo test it's always worth seeing if you can write to the ftp server kind of the two things i check when i have ftp is anonymous access and if we can write to it so let's try to upload test.txt Oh, I think it's put test.txt rather. And access is denied. So we we can anonymously read files from the FTP server, but we cannot write files. Let's go ahead and check out this over here. Come on, yo, speed up your game. Uh Rust scan's failing me. I am just gonna do it manually with nmap. So we'll do nmap 21, 22, 80, 13, 11. 3389-A to scan all, or throw all the enumeration scripts at it, hacksmarter.thm and dash V for verbose mode. That should do it a little bit faster as we run things. And let me check out chat and make sure I'm not missing anything. Mohammed said, how about Nebu scanning port tool? I've, ne I've never checked it out. I'll have to check it out. YN said, is this how you get elite at hacking grinding in a Friday night? Dude, this is all I do. Like, um... <laughs> I work during the day as a pen tester, and then at night I continue hacking because I don't have a life or a hobby or much of anything. And my kids are at my in-laws' house, so I don't even have kids. Like most people who don't have kids with them on a Friday night are gonna go out and party. I sit in front of my computer screen. Welcome to the life of Tyler. What up, hack? Good to have you here, my friend, over on YouTube. Let me check out Twitch. Am I missing anything? Are there any text-based packet inspectors? Yeah, T-Shark, correct. I've never personally used it, but I do know that does what you're asking for. And let's make sure I'm not missing anything on LinkedIn. And I don't believe I am, at least comment-wise. And here we go, our in-map scan is done. So let's go ahead and begin formally setting up our notes. We'll grab all of these services here, we'll copy it, over here to cherry tree. I'm gonna paste them all in here. Uh, Control Alt C in order to do code mode. There we go. We have some code syntax highlighting. We'll add spaces between some of these services. 3389. And then for each service, I like to create a separate cherry tree node just to keep our nodes a little more organized. So for this, we'll go ahead and create a node called FTP. And I like to put in the port number and we'll do that. We'll do one for SSH as well. SSH 22. Whoops. And we have port 80 right here. So we'll copy that. HTTP 80. Almost done. We have this weird port 1311. I'm just going to copy it from down here. Come on, Cherry Tree. What you doing, bro? Why aren't you scrolling? Cherry Tree's broken. Let's try it again. Oh, freaking cherry tree. I'm going to have to switch back to one note at this point. If I zoom out. It's just not, maybe it's my VM, maybe it's not cherry tree. Things aren't scrolling very well. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I miss half the freaking stuff, you stupid cherry tree. Wow. There we go. Good job, Tyler. Glad you're figuring it out. All right, we got port 1311. And finally, we have RDP here, 3389. We'll copy that and do uh, some note for that, 3389. There we go. So we can kind of go through this. What we checked on here is we can say anonymous access is allowed. Anonymous right access is not allowed. So two little notes on that. If we find credentials, we could always come back to that. Uh, when you are when you have FTP open on a machine, if you find credentials, you might be able to authenticate as that user and then really dive into things and find some other information. So we'll keep that in mind. And we also notice 
this is Windows. So if it didn't already tell you it's Windows, we now know it's Windows NT. So it's some Windows server running on the back end. We can also see it right there. So some hints that we're dealing with a Windows machine if we didn't already know. SSH, kind of a similar thing here. There's not much we can do unless we get credentials. You're not gonna likely be able to brute force SSH very well, but once we get credentials, we can come back to this. But once again, if we did not know this was Windows, we could just do some very basic banner grabbing, and we see that this is open SSH for Windows, and we do have some version information there. The web server, now this is where it might be a little more interesting. We have this web server running on port 80, and it's a Microsoft IIS server and 10.0. And I know just from memory, there's no major exploits for this. So it's not gonna be some CVE we fire off on the web server to get access. But anytime we encounter a web server, I like to make a checklist of things that we should do. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a to-do list. And we'll say like go buster for directories and go buster for vhost. We could run Nikto for a basic like vulnerability scanner on it. We can check source code. Uh, we could check even like sometimes on CTFs, you'll have robots.txt that will expose some interesting information, but that'll be kind of our checklist with that. We will come back to this. Let's keep looking at our running. Well, you know what, before we look at the other running services, let's go ahead and get some of these scans running. Let's open up our terminal here and we can go ahead and get out of FTP here. And we'll do go buster dir u hacksmarter.thm dash w for our word list. And we can just use user share word list dir buster directory list 2.3 medium. I think we'll be fine. And we'll call this go buster dir. We'll open another one and we'll do go buster vhost u hacksmarter.thm. And honestly, we could use the same word list. There's technically some better word lists for vhost in the sec list thing for, I think, discovery and then web content. But for our purposes, this should be fine. And you can see we're getting a bunch of false positives here. So we have to exclude the size 334. So we can do that with exclude, exclude size 334. Oh, maybe it's not that let me look at it is it exclude length is what it might be um where is it at am i blind i don't see it but i think it's exclude length maybe yeah i was right exclude length is what i was looking for so we'll call that go buster v host and then finally let's get nick doll going as well hack smarter thm and we'll call this nick doll all right, let's look back at our notes. We're running some of this stuff. We'll check source code on the website in a moment. We also have this on 13.11, which something with hack smarter sec, something with Dell. So we have some hints of what might be going on here. Not much other information. So this looks like some type of web server that's running. So we will want to check this out. And of course, we have RDP here, Hack Smarter Security. Going to pause right here and make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat. Side on PC, I'm stuck in the guessing game part of this room. Really enjoying it so far, though. Great work. Oh, cool. Have you been able to get user or do you not yet have full initial access? Let me know. YN said, bet you feel better in the morning than the party goers. This is what I want to become over the next year. Baby steps for this noob though. Yeah, I got all my party not when I was like 13 years old. Like I was kind of a troublemaker as a young teenager and I got that all out of my system and now everybody in their like 20s are going and partying. They're like, why don't you do it, Tyler? I'm like, bruh, I did it when y'all were still youngins and I got it, I, I don't find it fun or interesting. Waste of time, right? Waste of time. Sooner you realize that, the sooner it will be better for your life, for your family, for everything in general. All right, let's go ahead and check out this web server. We'll go to HTTP hacksmarter.thm. Here we go, Hacksmarter Security. 
So welcome to Hack Smarter Sec. We are a group of black hat hackers who decided to take a break from ransomware to improve your company's security. If you landed on this page, it's because we hacked you or you want us to hack someone else with our elite hacker skills. Whether you need to get revenge on your past employer or get access to your girlfriend's social media account, you are in the right place. All right, learn more. Just the same thing here. These don't go anywhere besides to about us. We have hackers for hire. We have a search that doesn't do anything. So it seems to be a very static web page. We can go ahead and look at the source. See if there's any interesting scripts going. And there is not. Very basic web server. We can check out GoBuster Dur. Has not found anything interesting. Vhost has not found anything interesting, and Nikto has not found anything interesting. So if we go back to our notes, we'll go ahead and keep those those scans running, but checking source code, we didn't check robust.tech, so we can do that real quick. And nothing, right? We could also do like um, fake page. Sometimes you can get some version information here but it is not enabled there we do have the version information here those microsoft is 10.0 and like i said there's not going to be any major vulnerabilities at least i'm pretty sure there isn't but we can quickly look for exploits our vulnerabilities in is 10.0 remote code execution i'm curious let's check it out i can tell you if this does work it's an unintended path so i'm curious Oh, an exploit's not available. So you'd have to like reverse engineer it and make your own exploit. So if anyone can reverse engineer this CVE and make their own exploit and get access that way, please let me know because I would be very, very interested in that. But it, the IIS server, I can tell you as the one who created the room, that's not going to be your way in, at least not uh, the primary way in. We will come back to it. That that The details that you see here are important. All right. This is important. And this is important. We will come back to it. But we have this unknown server service running on port 1311. So let's go ahead and check this out. The way we can do that is if we do hacksmarter.thm. And if we want to go to a different port, we do those uh, the two dots, whatever that's called, and 1311. Saying we want to visit this via HTTP on port 1311. Let's give it a shot. And it says we need TLS. So all that means is add an S. And we'll do advance and we'll accept the risk and continue. Okay, so we have Dell EMC Open Manage, Manage System Login, specify and manage node and enter credentials and then click Submit. So, I mean, a host name IP address, we could always just try some like default creds. We'll do, I don't know, admin, admin, submit. And it does not work. We could try it again. We could look up, like anytime you you see a login screen, and let me go ahead and take a screenshot of this and walk you through what I generally do if I see a login screen in order of steps. We'll grab this for our notes. Go over to Cherry Tree. All right, so we have this login screen. My scroll still isn't working very well, but when I see a login screen, we have a few different things for our to-do list. The first thing I always do, and this is really important for those of you studying for the OSAP, is the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid, right? And the first thing you should check is default credentials. You would be amazed how many people get stuck on a CTF or on the OSCP because they don't check one of the first things they're just saying, hey, what are the default credentials and do those work? And even as a real pen tester, especially when I do an internal pen test, you would be surprised how often different network services have the default credentials set and I'm able to get access and then get RCE uh, via whatever role is attached to that. So we'll check default credentials. We could always check various injection attacks, although I don't check that first. I try default credentials. If that doesn't work, we'll research the software version for known CVEs. That doesn't work. We can also just check from random injection attacks. SQL, no SQL. Uh, things along those lines. And we could also try to use like cool on the web page and do a password 
spray attack if all else runs out. But those would be my initial attempts of what I would do. So we can go ahead and do that together. If we go to Dell, Open Manage, Default Creds. We'll see if there are any default creds with Dell Open Manage. Blah, blah, blah. Should be root, root for Linux, but we're on Windows. The administrator account is the login for Windows. You must have a password. So you need the admin account. So it doesn't seem to be uh, default credentials. We could try root, root just because they say that. Uh, let me go ahead and grab the IP. Root, root, submit. And login failed. So then the thing is, let's go back to our to-do list. We can say, okay, default credentials didn't really work. Let's look for known CVEs with this software. To do that, we kind of need some version information. And we can click around down here. One good place might be about. So we'll click about. And for some reason, this takes a little bit to load. We'll give it a, a chance. We can click some of these other things, like what's a managed web server. Does this do anything for us? This also will eventually load. I wonder if it'd be faster to curl this. Hold up, I'm curious, let's try this. I'm gonna go ahead and stop Nikto, although that actually done, I can see it now. But if we curl that, dash K to ignore certificate errors. That doesn't help us much, right? Do I see version information here? No. Okay, but we do see it here. If we go just back to this, because I'm impatient, we see Open Managed Server version 9.4.02. So let's go ahead and grab that, and we'll type Dell Open Manage that exploit. Okay, so we have a few things. Let's check these out. So Dell EMC Open Managed Server, blah, no, bro, you don't want my feedback, homie. Improper limitation of a path name to restricted directory. So it contains multiple path transversal vulns. An unauthenticated remote attacker, which is us, could potentially exploit these vulnerabilities by sending a crafted web API request containing directory traversal character sequences to gain file system access on the compromised managed system. All right, and uh, Dell EMC would like to thank David Yeslin from Rhino Security Labs. This should be your hint that you're looking at the right spot because I work at Rhino Security Labs. Yeah, Overgrown Carrot, you're, you're spot on. And David Yeslin, really genuine human being. I work with him at Rhino. I actually have one-on-ones with him every single week. So this should be a good hint. If you know me personally and you know where I work and you know my background, you should think, hmm, I might be barking up the correct tree right here. So here we go. We have this file vulnerability in Dell Open Managed Server that we found in internal network pen test. No, I already worked there. I need to subscribe to your newsletter. And uh, the interesting thing about this, I'll allow you to kind of read through this on your own, but there's an authentication bypass that then allows you to do a file read based on um, some of the vulnerabilities that we see here. So we can walk through this a little bit. The OMSA web interface uses Apache Tomcat. If we take a look at WebXML, an interesting authenticated servlet is expose it download servlet. And we can see that there. If you decompile it, there is an obvious file read vulnerability as we dive through some of this stuff. And we can do a get parameter for a string and there's our file that we're able to read. Now what's interesting is this was submitted to Dell and then Dell patched it and then they told rhino uh actually right here is where it talks about it we submitted to dell dell said yes it's patched and they told rhino hey go ahead and test this patch then rhino i wasn't there at the time but dave at that time checked out their patch and they did technically patch it but then he figured out another bypass which is pretty easy if you just encode the t right here the request succeeds and you're able to get access anyways now i made this machine a lot easier than what I could have done. So you guys can thank me for that. When I initially set up the machine, a little bit of background, I first made it vulnerable just to this initial exploit, which you could have got right here. This 9.4.0.0 was the original version information that I had on this Dell Open Manage server. You can see it's above that now, 9.4.0.2. 
This was the original thing that Rhino reported to Dell, and uh, this would have given you file read, and Dell said they patched it. But I applied the patch. And you can actually see that in the version information. So any of the other public exploits for this vulnerability that you find will not work because they're not uh, considering the patch. Even when this blog came out, uh, we didn't even have this patch in our CVE uh, file. So when I initially made the machine and then did this exploit, I ended up doing a custom curl request, including this encoding method that I found while reading through this blog myself and was able to bypass the patch myself, just like the blog talks about, and was able to do it. Now, I, I thought about being mean and making you do that as well. But then I thought, okay, I don't wanna make this too difficult. So then I went to the, the Rhino Security Lab CVE GitHub repository. I rewrote our initial CVE so that it includes this bypass that we talk about in the blog, submitted a pull request, and then it was approved. But the cool thing I think is the only way you can get initial access to this machine, it's if you use the CVE modification I made to the Rhino CVE GitHub. All the other ones like this will not work because I am using a patched version of Dell Open Managed Server that is patched to these initial exploits. I hope that makes makes sense. But yeah, Rek this Gizmo said that would have stopped me in my tracks, not gonna lie. And that's what I kind of figured. And it would have annoyed me too if I was a user. I knew because I knew what exploit I was using. So I spent the time figuring it out. But if you didn't even know this exploit was gonna work, um, that was almost like too frustrating from a user's perspective, at least from my perspective. Funny memes over on YouTube said, what is this box? This box is called Hack Smarter Security and Try Hack Me. It was just released today and uh, I'm the author of it. So I'm walking people through the process of making it and also exploiting it. But if you go over to our CVE on GitHub, here it is, you can see uh, I updated it. So that's my GitHub. I updated this to include bypassing the one patch and did that nine months ago. So you can actually see back when I made this machine. But here it is, we can kind of read through how this works. We just do the CVE, give our IP, our target IP and our target port, and it will give us a prompt in order to read files from. You can kind of see how it works here. We can read demo.txt so we can get file read on the server. So. Let's go ahead and give this a shot, shall we? We can just copy this script right here. We can go to raw and we will copy, switch over to here. And I'm gonna change this back to terminal and we'll do mousepad exploit.py. And here it is. And we can even shebang it as well. Well, let me just keep it like this. I'm pretty sure it'll work either way. So proof of concept written, Dave, et cetera, et cetera. See if I can find the patch. It's in the curl request. You can kind of look through it on your own, but you can see where I URL encoded just the T. That's all it was, was URL encoding the T in the HTTP request, and that's what how you bypass the patch, which is just crazy to me that it was that easy to bypass. We'll just go ahead and save that. There we go. Now we have our color encoding a little bit more. Let's see if I can find it. Here, let me go back to our blog post. Oh, that's not the blog post. Go back to our blog post. And it's on this right here, this string right here, this URL. So we can just search for this and I'll show you this patch. Right here. So this is a T URL encoded. That's all you needed to bypass Dell's initial patches, URL encoding that T and then resending the request in that way. Go ahead and close this out, open up our terminal and we can do Python three exploit.py. If we forgot the syntax, it will tell us. So Python three ex exploit.py. We need to give it our IP, which mine is up there in the corner. 10.13.46.224, and then we need to give it the target IP. We'll do hacksmarter.thm, and the target port, which the default port for tell Dell Open Managed Server is port 1311. So let's give that a shot, and we will see if it works. And it's quite interesting how this works. Let me back up a little bit to the blog. 
if we scroll up a little bit here, we're actually setting up a fake um, server, essentially, the way this is working. So you can see here's our attacker, and we're authenticating to the remote server. It says, hey, would you like to authenticate are, are these that well let's back up here a little bit it thinks we are kind of a rogue uh, dell open managed server so we're almost able to authenticate ourselves if i understand this authentication bypass correctly uh Ruck this gizmo said does the t need to be encoded or any character and if t why so let me jump down here i believe their fix was like just blocking that specific url but you could URL encode it and you're able to bypass it. So we can read it here. After the fix, the security filter, which is intended to <coughs> protect the download servlet, servlet from read arbitrary files is implemented, but able to be trivially bypassed. When calling download servlet, a filter is used to look for malicious paths. So it's just looking for, hey, is that download servlet pass being, being, being passed to download servlet? And if it is, the request should be rejected. So you can actually see the filter right here. And you can see the relevant decompiled class here. But because it's just looking for that specific path, well, if you URL encode it, it looks like, hey, this is totally fine. The path is here and we should be good to go. Funny meme said, so you should, you could URL encode any letter and it would work. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't have to be T. You could URL encode download uh, the D or O and it should work either way. And look at this. We have it. At least it seems like we do. We could try like... Oh, maybe it would be, um, what, what is it in Windows? Is it C, Etsy host? We can do like file read. I'm always so used to Linux. Oh, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's look for GitHub. Okay. So we can check out Windows files here. And so, yeah, let's try some of these. Here's what I'm trying to do. Let's just try this. I don't know if we need the C or not. And th there, we have full file read, right? We can see that we are hitting um, this server. We're able to read from the server. We should probably grab that as a screenshot. Right, we have file read. We'll drop that in here. And we should probably grab the exploit that we're using just so we take good notes. We can close that out for now. We'll go ahead and grab, we'll just grab this blog post because it explains it well. So if we we're doing this for a pen test report, we have a little more information on how and why this exploit works, but we have full file read. But now this is where a lot of people are gonna get stuck. Um, because what do we do from here? What files do we read? We can read files. Now you could read like, try to read like system, shadow, things like that and, and do it that way, which is kind of a an unintended way, but I left it in there just because I think it accomplishes the same purpose. You could probably bypass some stuff that way. But if we think through overall what we have access to, if we go back to this web server, it's running Microsoft IIS HTTP 10.0. Now, if we don't know exactly what to look for, we can go to handy dandy chat uh, GPT. Might have to authenticate. Oh, nope, I'm good. So here's chat GPT, and we could say, what are some common files where sensitive See if ChatGP can help us out here if we don't know what to look for. All right. Sense information, including credentials, blah, blah, blah. 
here are some common files and locations where sensitive information might be stored. So the first one is web.config. This XML file is used for storing configuration data for web applications running on IIS. It can include database connection strings, application settings, and credentials that are used by the web application. It is essential to properly secure this file to prevent unauthorized access. So the first thing ChatGPT tells us about is, hey, there's this web config file that it will not be good if an attacker gets access to it. Well, we have file read, so we should have access to it if we know the location. What is the standard location of web.config? The standard location is in the root directory of the web application. This file is used to configure blah, blah, blah the structure for typical, uh, typical IS web server with respect to the web application might look like this. So your website root, web config, so location directly within the root directory, blah, blah. It should be in the root folder site, typically found within the WW root folder or a specific site directory under the INET pub folder. Okay, so we have this, right? This looks interesting if I can copy it. And we'll just open this up. So we have that and it would be web-config, but it says it can either be in the WW root folder or a specific site directory under the INET pub folder. Well, let's try this first and see if we get any hits. And we have nothing. So if we look back at the chat GPT response though, it said, or in a specific site directory, which is often how IIS is configured. So what's the name of the site? Well, if we go back to our notes here in Cherry Tree and look at HTTP, we actually have an HTTP title here called Hack Smarter Sec. So then we think, okay, what if we do Hack Smarter Sec as our name? Okay, that doesn't work either. And I might, <laughs> I might be doing it wrong myself on my own machine. I'm actually glancing over at my, my notes from when I did this, INET pub. Oh, so it's actually in WW root. So we need to back up a little bit. Let's ask this. If the sites let's ask this question. Okay. So um, I was just misunderstanding what it was telling me. Let's try this INET pub and then in the dub root hacksmutter sec web config. Let's see if that works. And there you go. We do have access to the web.config file. And we can see this. So reading contents of INET pub, blah, blah, blah. We have some app settings and we have some hard coded credentials. We have Tyler and I am elite hacker and I know it. Yep, that I mean that's actually the same password I use for my real try hack me account. So go ahead and log in on it. But we do have some credentials here. Let's go ahead and grab a screenshot of these credentials. Actually wrong screenshot tool. Let me grab the right screenshot tool. Here we go and we'll back up to um, this right here. and we will copy that. Jump over here. We have creds. I didn't try to select text, chill. And just so we don't have to try and freaking type that out, let's go ahead and just grab this in plain text. We'll copy it, go over to here and drop it in here. Funny meme says, what screenshot tool am I using? <coughs> I'm sorry guys, getting over the sinus infection. I'm using Lightshot. Yeah, not green shot, but I think they're very similar. I'm using light shot, but green shot, I think looks like very similar and does the same thing. I don't even know the difference, <clears throat> but we have creds. Now we have two places to try them, RDP and SSH. Now, if they work on RDP, that would be awesome because RDP gives us a full GUI interface, which just makes life a little bit easier for us. So let's go ahead and try it with, uh, RDP. So we'll do Remina hacksmarter.thm. So far, so good. And we'll do Tyler. Go ahead and, and uh, grab our password 
from here. I'm elite hacker and I know it. Paste it in and hit OK. And we cannot connect. And often when RDP is enabled, you see this in the real, real world, only certain users, often administrator users, will be able to RDP into it. So our Tyler user must not be an administrator. We cannot RDP, but we have SSH pulled up right here. So let's see if it works on SSH, shall we? SSH Tyler at hacksmarter.thm. Yes. I think I still have the password. Okay. I do not have the password copied. Let me go ahead and grab that. Copy. Paste. Boom. We have access. And let's also make sure my machine's not going to die. We got one hour and 10 minutes. Beautiful. So here we can go ahead and do dir cd desktop. And there is our user.txt flag, but I'm not going to share it in the video or in the live stream. I'm showing you how to get there, but I want you to do all the work yourself and get the actual flag so you learn in the process. I suppose you could just steal the password I saw, but if you take the time to type that in, fine. You're only hurting yourself by not going through the process on your own. But there is our user.txt, our initial flag. And if we grab that, drop it here, we will have user.txt. But now we need to do privilege escalation. So let me just ask you, we got, how many people got in chat? Teen, almost 40, almost 50, <coughs> geez, almost 50 people. Let me ask you guys, what would you do next? What do we do for Windows enumeration? You tell me and I'll do it and we'll see if it works. Not everybody at once though. Um, Leonardo said, love Tyler using Remina instead of X3 RDP. All right, PowerShell history and WinPs. Yeah, we can try that out. Uh, we'll also just do who am I slash priv is something I always do first. And that's just seeing, hey, can, do we have like potato privileges? Who am I? All is what overgrown carrot same. So we don't have any special privileges, so we can't get like a really quick pwn. We can check PowerShell history. Yeah, let's do it. Let me ask how. Don't know what it is off the top of my head. And we are just in a standard CMD, but we can change it over to PowerShell just by typing PowerShell.exe. And we should be able to switch over to PowerShell. It'll make our shell a little bit better. All right. Oh, just get history. Is that all it is? Gosh, noob Tyler. Nothing. We could try. Yeah, so none of this is going to work, blah, blah. It doesn't automatically persist. So our PowerShell history, I don't think is going to help us. We could try this one right here. And we, we have nothing. What else did people say? Win piece? Yeah, we can try win piece. Let's give that a shot. So let's go over to here. We can stop our enumeration now. And let's let's try win piece. I'll we'll try that and see what happens. Do I have win piece? Nope. Let me go ahead and download WinPs. Yeah, Leonardo, we'll try that next. Oh, where's the freaking binaries at? Where's the releases for WinPs? Let's go back to this. Here we go. This is what I'm looking for. WinPsAny.exe. That sounds good to me. All right. CP Home Tyler downloads WinPs. And we'll copy that there. We'll host a very basic Python web server. And then from here, we will go. We're on our desktop, so we should be able to write. We'll do wget 10.13.46.224. And then what was that file even called? The WinPs Any. We'll just copy it. And we'll do out file and we'll just call it winps.exe. And let's see if my syntax is correct there.
All right, so we have win peas, and we'll see if we can run it. Oh, so it looks like our automatic enumeration, ladies and gentlemen, are not going to work because Windows Defender is fully enabled. So you can see it caught win piece. We don't have permissions to turn it off. So all of your automatic enumeration type scripts are going to fail. Any Metasploit modules, Metasploit reverse shells are going to fail. They're all going to get caught by Windows Defender. So we have to work within Windows Defender and see if we can bypass some of this. Um, Leon said, well, he switched over to Twitch, but Leon said, any interesting folders in C? Well, you guys tell me. Let me switch over to C and let's see. Anything you guys want to check? We could check, uh, this is our web server, right? We could check logs. Oh, we don't have access to logs. We can check www root. <laughs> I don't think it ever found this. I forgot that I had super admin on here. Let me show you guys super admin real quick. We'll go to, uh, All right, if you go to superadmin.html, it just tells you to try harder. I had to throw something in there. I even forgot I did that till I went here myself, but we can see our super admin. We have this index backup. What's that? Just our standard index, so nothing interesting there. Dir hidden or dir forced. Don't remember which one of the two are the correct one. All right, we'll do that in C. I think it's force. Yeah, it's force. Anything there that y'all want to check out? Seeing if you guys can steer me in the right direction. I obviously know the right direction, but I'm curious if anyone will get this. Next run WinPs if I'm being real. Oh, I think you said that before, Reckless Gizmo, before you realize we can't run WinPs because Defender stops us. Any special services? And could we check users? Yeah, so we can check users with net users. Good call. So we just have administrator Tyler in the standard SSH service. Leon said open manage is not default. You would check it. Okay, let's do that. We'll CD to open manage. Uh, maybe Windows. We have some setup.exe. I mean, nothing too interesting there. Unless you see something, we can try support. Nothing there. Any special services? What do we? What processes? We can check processes that are running. Can we edit scheduled tasks? All good questions. Let's look at processes, and I'll just scroll up. You guys tell me if you see any interesting processes that we should check out. See if anyone spots it. Unquoted strings that that's actually a really good guess you would find you would find what we need to abuse if you look for unquoted service paths, but you don't actually abuse the unquoted service path to um, Privesk because you have to be able to write to a directory above it. No, not Amazon. Amazon's a default thing, at least on a uh, try hack me machine. I'll go ahead and show you guys right here. What the heck is spoofer scheduler? That sounds like a hacky thing. We are in a hacky server. So that might be something that's interesting, right? Spoofer scheduler. One way we can check that out is sc.exe. Uh, and then I think QC for query. And we can check spoofer scheduler. So spoofer scheduler. Sco <laughs> Gosh, I can't talk, y'all. Try to say that three times fast. Spoofer scheduler. What? L let's figure out what it is, first of all. Um, spoofer so it's a we have a privilege escalation here unquoted service path that's interesting 
Spoofer suffers from an unquoted service path vulnerability that can lead to privilege escalation. We can actually notice this here. Now, if you don't know what unquoted service path is, note that the binary path name is not within quotes and there are spaces. So then what it's actually trying to do when this process runs, it's going to look at each thing and try to execute a .exe. So it's going to try to execute program.exe. If that doesn't work, we'll go through each one of these and tell it tries to execute. So one way we could abuse this is if we can write to the C drive, we could write a program called program.exe. And if we're able to stop and start this service, we're able to exploit it, right? So, I mean, we can see if that might be the way in. We can echo test. And we cannot write to it. We could go ahead and try... Uh, each one of these folders and see if we could write to it would be one way to do it. But what I can tell you is, although it is vulnerable to an unquoted service path, I included this on purpose because people often report this, but unquoted service paths are difficult to exploit unless you can write to one of the folders included in the path. One thing to check, remember our whole KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. What if we just go to this directory. So if we CD, so here's our spoofer scheduler.exe. Scheduler if we go back to our query, every time this service runs, and it's running with NT system authority privileges, since it's a service, every time this service runs, it's going to launch or run the spoofer scheduler.exe. So the question is, what if we can write to this folder and create our own spoofer scheduler.exe. Well, the first test is, can we write to the folder? So let's try that, echo test. And you can see we are able to write to this folder. So that's kind of like, hey, we, we are looking at the right spot. The other question is, can we stop and start the service? So let's do this. Oh, Leon has a good question. The question would be, do you report unquoted service path if you can't write to the folder? Yes, you do. It's kind of like uh, an informational or a low, like it's best practice. It should still be reported. When I, before I was a pen tester on the blue team side of things, one of my jobs was, or my primary job was vulnerability management. And we would use Nessus to scan our environment. And one of our biggest vulns was unquoted service paths. And I wrote a PowerShell script that we deployed via SCCM that first detected if unquoted service paths were there. And then very simply added quotes around the service paths and it remediated all of those. So you should report unquoted service paths and they're super e easy to fix, even with the tool like SCCM, where you can apply it across all the computers in the network. So yes, you still do report it, but we can write to this folder, which means we, we could like literally place spoofer scheduler.exe, but it only works, right? If we can stop and start the service. Now you can use access check in order to do that, but you can also just try it and see if it works. So I think it's sc.exe. Is it just um, stop? Okay, so we can stop it. Actually, start. All right, so we can stop and we can start the spoofer scheduler. Yo, what up, raid people? Good to have you all here. We are working on Hack Smarter Security, a brand new machine that was just released on Try Hack Me, created by yours truly. So this is the official kind of walkthrough explaining my methodology for why I created the machine and how to get access to the machine. Since you guys just raided, I'll give you a very quick rundown of what we have. Uh, we have a few different services open. We have FTP. We found some stolen credit cards. We have SSH, et cetera, et cetera. But we abused Dell Open Managed Server running on port 1311, and we were able to get file read. We read the web.config file. We found some credentials for a guy named Tyler. That's also my name is, is Tyler since I created the machine. And with that, we tried first to RDP, but that did not work. Then we tried SSH, and that did work, and we were just manually enumerating the Windows server. Now, I say manually because Windows Defender is fully enabled. So over in chat, people first said, hey, try WinPeace. So I did that. I tried WinPeace, but as soon as he ran WinPeace, Windows Defender was like, no, bro, you can't be running your malicious virus software. But uh, here we have our spoofer scheduler, and we can stop.exe and start.exe, and we're good to go. 
Chrissy said, are those Tyler's credit cards as well? Absolutely. Free try hack me for everyone. You get those credit cards in the FTP server and you will be good to go. Uh, but spoofer scheduler, we need to replace this. But here is key. I'm not going to make this mistake because I don't want to reboot my machine. But remember, Windows Defender is enabled. So what many people are going to do at this point is they are going to go to MSF Venom and they're going to create a reverse shell with MSF Venom that's going to spit out a .exe. They're going to name that spoofer scheduler.exe. They're going to bring it over to the box. They're going to replace this one. They're going to stop and start the service. But then what's going to happen when they do that is remember, Windows Defender is alive. It is going to detect that, hey, you're using a malicious payload and it's you're actually going to break the machine because you're going to break the service running itself. You will no longer be able to stop and start the service because Windows Defender is going to quarantine the entire spoofer schedule or service. And that's why I say over in the description, be careful how you're doing this. That's kind of like my uh, me saying you have you got caught. You have lost because you spawned, you tried to spawn a reverse shell that was detected by Defender and the spoofer scheduler service has now been quarantined by Defender. You have to reboot the machine. So we have a few options here. And I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. One, I'm going to show you how to create a reverse shell with NIM that will fully bypass Windows Defender, at least back when this machine was created. Now, I will say this no longer works on the most updated versions of Windows, but you need to consider I created this machine nine months ago. Nine months ago, this fully bypassed Windows Defender. And even as of January 2024, I think that's when I released a video on my YouTube channel, it bypassed Defender. Then I had everyone crying on YouTube. Like you can go look at the comments for my my uh, AV evasion videos. People are like, yo, you're just doing this for views. This no longer works. Well, no crap, you freaking idiot. Like the way AV evasion works is it's a cat and mouse game. If I publicly disclose an AV evasion method, which is what I did, people use it and Windows Defender has cloud detection. They're seeing what you're doing. They're going to add that to their system and they're going to catch your AV evasion method. So let me just make that clear. If you watch my videos on AV evasion and they don't work three months later, do not cry in the comments about how I'm doing this just for views. Freaking Google how AV evasion works. Once you explain it, it gets burnt and it's no longer going to work. All right, there's my rant about AV evasion. But I created this machine nine months ago, and it's kind of locked in time. Of course, the machine itself does not have internet access, so it's not receiving Windows Defender updates. So we really just need to bypass Windows Defender nine months ago, not current Windows Defender. I really hope that works, or that, that makes sense to you. So there is a video by this uh, cool dude. Let's see if I can find him. I wonder if it just pops up. What if I do Windows Defender Bypass? What videos pop up? <laughs> Look at that. So there, there is your answer. If the creator of the room posts a video saying, hey, here's how you bypass Windows Defender, you might be able to bypass Windows Defender on the machine that they create. But this cool guy named Tyler Ramsby created a video on how to bypass Windows Defender. And let's see if any of the comments saying that I am doing it for views. Maybe not. Didn't try, blah, blah, blah. Caught me when I tried to save it. Not working. It gets detected. Windows version looks old. Like <laughs> people QQ and I promise you this really did work. And this is one way to do it. So this is a PowerShell script way in a PS2.exe way. You can go ahead and watch this video. But there's uh, the way I want to show you which this, this way would work as well. So you're welcome to do it this way on this machine, and it will work. I really like this NIM reverse shell. Another way to bypass Windows Defender that you use a NIM to write a reverse shell, and then you compile it, and it bypasses Windows Defender. So you can see it here. It's quite easy to read. We'll go ahead and grab this, copy it, go over to our host machine here. And we will do mouse pad reverse, reverse shell dot nim. Drop it in there, save it. And you can see what we need to update. If my scroll would work, there we go. There, that's what I'm trying to do. We need to update the IP. We'll do 10.13.46.224. I'm just going to make the port 80 so it seems a little bit less suspicious. 
and we will go ahead and save that. But now there's a few steps that we need to do, which I jotted down in my phone as notes, believe it or not. You can watch my video and I have it there. I don't know why I didn't add it to the description because even when I try to uh, repeat my own steps, I have to rewatch my video and then figure out how to do it. So I sent myself the notes here. There's a few basic things we need to do that you'd be able to find in that video that I stumbled across myself. The first thing we need to do is just install NIM. I don't think it's installed on this instance of Kali, so we'll go ahead and give that a shot. We'll get that installed. I'm going to get a drink of water. Apple juice. Just doing this for the view. Absolutely, I am. Getting rich off of YouTube. All right, so now we have NIM installed, and now there is a command in order to compile this. And I'm going to kind of look at my phone, and I'll, I'll walk you through this. What is my phone doing? No, don't do that. So we're going to do NIM C-D Ming W. That's what we're using to compile it. And then app GUI just means, hey, we want it to be a .exe app GUI type thing. We'll optimize it for speed. And we want to call it spoofer scheduler.exe. That's what it's called, right? And we want to use reverse shell.nim. I think my syntax there is correct. We'll go ahead and see if it works, fingers crossed. All right, ls. And we now have our spoofer scheduler.exe. Now, if we go back over to this, I'm just going to call this ssh. We want to make a backup of this file just in case we break anything. So let's go ahead and do this. I should add the YouTube channel to the about section. Do I not have it there? It's Tyler's YouTube channel here. There, I dropped my YouTube channel. YouTube is my main platform. So those of you watching right now on uh, LinkedIn and Twitch, Go to YouTube. That is my primary platform. I just use the other platforms just for streaming. But YouTube is my main main platform where I post videos uh, outside of even live streaming. And the live streaming videos get posted as standalone videos when I'm done as I work through different machines. But okay, let's go ahead and make a backup of this. And because we have right access to this directory, we should be able to just rename it. We'll rename spoofer scheduler dot. No, nope, not that, bro to spoofer <laughs> did that work and it did and now we can go ahead and host a python web server to grab this file real quick we'll do wget 10.13.46.224 spoofer scheduler dot Gosh, I can't type spoofer scheduler.exe outed as spoofer scheduler.exe. Okay. And now host a simple netcat listener and we'll see if we get detected by Windows Defender. If we do, you have to reboot the entire machine because like I said, it will quarantine the service, but we'll do sc.exe. Uh, stop spoofer scheduler.exe. Oh, that's what I meant to do. All right, we stopped it. SC.exe start spoofer scheduler. And there we are, NT authority system, and we have full admin access to the box. But I want to show you what's going to happen. Because I'm going to show you a few different ways of doing this. This shell is not going to live long. And the reason for that is over here, it's, it's like, hey, start the service, start the service, start the service, start the service, start the service. But when you get a shell this way, Windows will eventually time out saying, hey, the service is not starting properly and we're going to time out. So your shell is actually going to time out there. You can see our shell timed out. We no longer have access. And it says the service did not respond to the starter control request in a timely fashion. So you have a few things you can do here. You can very quickly set up persistence and we can create an account. Otherwise, I'm gonna show you another way that we can do this. But let's first just try to set up persistence and I'll show you this way. So we'll start our listener again and we will just go ahead and start the service again. That will give us a shell and we can do net user hacker uh, hack smarter one, two, three, add. And then net local group administrators hacker add I think as well. All right, now we, we have full persistence. And here's what I mean by that. 
We can do SSH as hacker at hacksmarter.thm. Hack smarter one two three, and who am I priv? Right, we are full admin at this point. Dir cd two administrator cd desktop, and that's where the hacking targets are at. And just to prove, I'm not going to show you the hacking targets. I don't want to give you the final flag, but I can echo like, "Hello, I am admin to admin text," just proving that I can write to the desktop. You can see admin.txt, I can write to the desktop, and we are good to go. So with our short-lived shell, with that, uh, the way it spawns that way, we can very quickly do persistence and add ourselves that way. Now, another way that we can do this is using, I'm actually have to look at my own notes for this one because it's been a while since I've done it. We can use iExpress.exe. Now, if you've ever, never heard of iExpress.exe, this actually still works because it's not malicious in and of itself. So regardless of the version of Windows Defender that is on, this will always work unless there's something set up in order to disallow this specifically. But what? Let, this is ask ChatGPT. What is iExpress? allows us to create a self-extracting, self-installing package from a set of files. Essentially, it's utility for creating installable packages, self-extracting archives, blah, 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 blah. So what you can do with iExpress is you can turn a .bat file into a .exe and then run it. Now, we can't do like a reverse shell without being detected, typically speaking, from Windows Defender. But what we can do is add just our user to the local admin group. Now here's a caveat. You need to do this in Windows. So you need to have access to another Windows machine to do this. You can't do it from Linux. At least I don't think you can do it from like Wine or anything. If you can, uh, you guys let me know if you can. Yeah, David, you're, you're actually pointing out exactly what I'm talking about, making a script that creates an admin account, but you have to make it a .exe script that creates the admin account. You could also do this with PS2exe that turns PowerShell scripts into exe. You could do it that way. So I'll show you, um, I mean, there's mul the, what I like about this machine, and maybe I'm biased since I created it, but there's multiple ways to do the privilege escalation part. You can do this Defender, bypass with the reverse shell. You can use PowerShell, turn into a .exe, upload at that. You can use iExpress. Now, this is a way I haven't seen before, so that's why I want to show it off, but there's multiple ways you can accomplish this. We've already done it one way. Let me show you another way. 192.168. Is this the machine I want? Okay, so this machine right now is on the Tyler Cloud. So this isn't like, this has nothing to do in and of itself with the CTF that we're doing. This is actually my Windows Server in my house, not on this computer. I have another computer set up running Windows Server and we just RDP'd into it because my host machine here only has 16 gigs of RAM. And if I try to run Kali VM, a Windows VM and live stream on OBS at the same time, my computer will melt. Um, but here we go. Now we have access to a Windows machine. Oreo by said, maybe make the file with Python and you're spot on. I did that that way as well when I was doing this. There's a way to do it with Python that also bypasses Windows Defender, turning Python to exe. I don't remember what the file is called, but yeah, you can do it with Python as well. The reason I like iExpress is it's built directly into Windows and there really is nothing malicious about it. So I'm going to look over at my notes over here. Well, first, well, let's just first create our script for adding our user. Nope. Notepad. We'll open up handy dandy notepad, and we can just do net local group administ administrators and our current user is Tyler, and we just want to add him uh, to the administrator group. We'll save that, and we'll just call it add.bat. All files. We'll just save it on my desktop. All right, so we added it. Now, if we go to iExpress here, we're gonna run this as an administrator. So it says, welcome to iExpress 2.0. This will be created a self-extracting, self-installing package. So we'll go ahead and create new self-extraction directive file. We'll hit next. 
and then extract files and run an installation command. I think that is what we want. So we'll click next. Type the title of your package in the following box. We'll just call it um, add. We'll hit next. We don't want a prompt and we'll click next on that as well. We don't want to display a license. Our package files, we can grab the dot bat that we just put on the desktop right there. And we'll do next. And the install program, we'll do like cmd slash c add dot bat. And I don't think we need to do anything for our post install command. Let me look at my notes. Maybe we do click next, like default. No, I don't think so. Next, default, recommended. We could do hidden as well. I think this is fine. If you want to display a message, no message. Enter the target path and file name. Let's save it as like spoofer scheduler. You can of course name anything you want and rename it later on. Spoofer scheduler. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Uh, we don't want to restart the computer. Save self-extracting file. That's fine. Fine. Finish. Okay. Now we have a spoofer scheduler.exe. The question is, can I drag that via here over to my own machine? And do I need to set up, do I need to transfer it via like an SMB server? That's what I'm not even sure about. <laughs> Let me see if I can just do it this way. Can I grab this? Oh, is it not going to work? Oh, it's not even the right one anyways. Is there a way, I'm actually curious about this now. Is there a way to turn it on so you can drag and drop from Remina? I imagine there is. Otherwise, we can set up an SMB server and do it that way. Well, let me check. Drag and drop files Remina. Right click the RDB connection you are using to select edit. Under the share folder option, enter the path of a folder on a client. Restart the connection. Share folder should be visible in file explorer. Oh, that's not really <coughs> what I want to do. Do I have to? My lace attempt. Wow. Copy and paste in text seems to work fine. Use the basic choose share. So do I have to? I must have to do a share folder. We can do that, I guess. That'll be fine. Can I do it while I'm already in here? I suppose not. How do I do this? Guys, I think I'm just going to use SMB server. I don't know how to do it with Remina. Oh, wait. Did I see share folder? Oh, is it under basic? Can I just do that? A uh, home, Tyler. Can I just do that? Will that do the job? I don't know if I'm doing this right. I'm, I might just do an SMB server and do it that way. I don't know enough about Remina to get that to actually work properly. Is it, will this do it if I drop a file here? Or is that like default? No, okay, whatever. 
let's do locate SMB server dot pi. Okay, that's cool. Let's try this one. What's the syntax for that again, and why does this not work? There we go. That's what I'm trying to do. And let me get chat pulled back up. Right click, copy and paste works for me by default in Remina. Really? Normally it should work from Remina. Why does mine not work, y'all? Let me try it one more time. You guys are watching me. Copy. I can't paste. There's nothing in my clipboard to paste. I'm not crazy, y'all. So apparently anyone else watching this, you probably have an easier way of doing this than me. Yeah, my install's weird. Whatever. Well, at least it'll be helpful to show people how to transfer files with SMB server, right? Um, we'll do this. Positional argument, share name, hack smarter. Does that work? Share path, home, Tyler. Okay. Paste to desktop. Okay, try pasting to desktop. Word. I'll give that a shot. I'm telling you guys, it doesn't work. At least not for me. That's okay, though. Will it be able to hit this? Run as administrator. I don't know which IP it is. <laughs> um, no, it should be this one. Shoot, so this might not work. I don't know if I have my networking set up properly be between this uh, Windows machine that I'm connecting to in this Kali machine right here because of how my networking is set up. So I'm actually not gonna, I apologize. I'm not gonna show it that way. <laughs> I'm gonna edit this part of the video out, but at least demonstrated how you could do it with Windows. I think I'm just gonna keep it to the my first way because it's gonna make the video a lot shorter. Just get a freaking reverse shell with NIM and add persistence that way. Copy to my local Windows machine. Yeah, I could. Like like I said, y'all, this will do the trick. You could even use your own Windows machine. I just don't like showing my host OS depending on what's all there on, on stream. That's why I'm not doing it this way, and I'm trying to use this weird, like, ghetto Windows server to do it. But um, that's fine. We'll, we'll work it this way. So I'm actually going to edit the video here, and then I'll start talking. All right, so I fast forward the video. I had a kind of a minor issue that only affects me apparently. My Remina instance would not allow me to copy and paste, but I at least showed you how to use iExpress.exe. You can turn a .bat script into a .exe, and then you would follow the same process we did with the NIM reverse shell. Just instead of doing a reverse shell, you would upload the spoofer scheduler.exe, and you would stop and start the service. And when that happens, you wouldn't be waiting for a shell that doesn't live very long and then dies. Instead, what would happen is it would just add your user to the administrator group then you go to the administrator desktop and get those hacking targets and you would be able to find the final flag so there's multiple ways to do this which is what i really like about this machine besides the fact that i created it is you can do a reverse shell that bypasses defender you can use iexpress to create a dot exe you can also use powershell to create a dot dx dot exe there is something called ps2.exe you can take a powershell script that adds your user to the administrator group turn into a dot exe upload it to the machine and do it that way as well and same with python python has a way you can turn python scripts into dot exe and do it that way so once you get to this point there are multiple ways that you are able to do this 
So hope you found this walkthrough helpful. Hope you enjoyed hacking through this machine. And hey, happy hacking, and I will catch you in the next one. All right, I'm done recording. Wait, what did you use for the first way? So funny memes, you'll see this if you watch the video back, but I actually use a NIM reverse shell. Here, I can show it to you. Uh, a NIM reverse shell, which bypasses Windows Defender. And then we just compiled our NIM reverse shell into a .exe and we uploaded that. And then we were able to get a shell as NT system authority. So that was the first way that I demonstrated. What is it about NIM that lets you bypass Defender, Ken? That's a good question. I don't even know. It doesn't work anymore. I think it's just because NIM isn't used very often for that. So uh, Windows Defender just didn't catch it when I first discovered that bypass, but now it does catch it. So if you try to do my NIM reverse shell on a fully updated version of Windows Defender as of today, it will catch it. But as of nine months ago when I created the machine, it would not catch it. Make sure I'm not missing anything in the different chat. And I don't think I am. So everyone, thank you for taking the time to hang out. I'm gonna edit this video down just a little bit and I will upload this in probably, today's Friday, maybe, maybe Monday. I wanna give people a little bit of time on their own to try to solve the machine, but I will drop it uh, probably on Monday, the full walkthrough for the Hacks Motor Security Room. And if you're watching now, you're just tuning in, you missed it. If you just go to my live tab on YouTube, you'll, you'll be able to watch this full live recording anyway. So even before I upload the video, you can catch the full walkthrough on my live tab. Just a standalone video will come out on Monday. But ladies and gentlemen, that is my first public official Try Hack Me Challenge Room release. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do have any feedback or if you find unintended ways of solving it, I would love to hear from you and uh, learn how you ended up approaching the machine and how you solved it. Like I said, there's multiple ways that you could do it, especially with the full file read. The interesting thing about the Dell Open Managed Server is it runs with system or administrator privileges, so you can read any file on the system. So there's some other interesting ways that you could get credentials that way, maybe hashes, maybe passwords, whatever that is, and see if you can gain, gain access that way. But I'm going to call it a night, but we have uh, 30, a little over 30 people on Twitch. We got 16 on YouTube. Hey, YouTube people, come join Twitch just so we can raid someone, right? So I'm going to drop a link. I dropped a link over in YouTube. Let's see if we can raid someone and give them some viewers. Let me look at InfoSec streamers. Whoops and see who's streaming. So, oh, VX Underground Live, that might be pretty cool. We have Ending with ALI, let's check out Ending with ALI, I don't know who this is. This is a tandem stream, what are they doing? Oh, is, is this with VX Underground? Oh, and we got Tiberius. Oh, sweet. Yeah, let's raid, let's raid these guys. Do raid. Okay. Go ahead and get ready to raid, y'all. Accept the raid. Accept the raid. All right. I'm actually going to get my own. I want to get the stream pulled up myself. Give me just a second, and we will. I'll send you all over there. All right, let's go and raid. Tell them, uh, tell them, hack smarter, not harder. That'll be our raid thing. Hack smarter, not harder. Let's go ahead and raid. See you guys there.